I'd like to say thank you to the Concha Valley Republican women for hosting this forum and for all the important work you do for our community. I hate to have missed a day because I really enjoy these forums, but I was already scheduled to host the Texas Police Chief's annual conference this week. On the campaign trail, as it's been every day that I've served as chief, I've been so grateful for the encouragement I receive day after day. Those who ask you to vote for someone else are justifying that position by saying it's time for a change. But especially as Republicans, we already know we need a bit more clarification when someone asks us to vote for a change. In fact, one such change email being circulated in support of one of my opponents seems to loosely paraphrase a Harvard Business Review report you can find online. The email is suggesting that sometimes an organization needs to change for change's sake. The Harvard article talks about change being necessary when the external environment doesn't force change on the organization. But the problem with applying that logic here is that outside forces require a law enforcement organization to be in a perpetual state of change if it is to be successful. Crime and criminals evolve. In fact, it was a refusal to modernize and change that I ran against in my first election. And today, change is a daily fact of life in the department just as it was in 2004. If what you want to vote in favor of is progress, then my administration is still the right choice. My opponents will say things ranging from the department's broken to we don't have enough manpower to pointing out what divisions they think should have more officers. But the changes they advocate, while they may sound logical on the surface, are all still the same arguments against progressive, proactive policing that we are making in 2004. The change they call for is a regression back to methodology that is outmoded and outdated. What they want in a nutshell is to put the focus back on the more officers driving around. The thought being that their presence prevents crime or maybe they happen upon criminals in the act. Once upon a time that's how it was done, but it's no longer effective and the proactive tactics we have adopted work. Today in San Angelo, you're 43% less likely to be a victim of crime than you were the year before my administration started. That's the simple fact. Through the meth epidemic, through synthetic marijuana, Special K, during the population boom and the economic downturn, we have reduced crime and kept it lower than the cities around us and lower than it was before we brought the change. As an aside, I have heard more than one of my opponents insinuate that these numbers, the FBI Uniform Crime Reports, are invalid. In fact, one opponent has a video in which they cite the Facebook meme that said San Angelo is the eighth most dangerous city and cite San Angelo Live as a source to prove that crime has drastically escalated. However, the meme originated from a TV news reporter who simply didn't understand the information they were looking at. I bring it up because it shocks me to think a candidate for San Angelo police chief is getting their crime stats from Facebook. The administration I have in place has reduced crime by being more proactive, by embracing intel and technology, statistics and analysis. Much as the Air Force and Goodfellow are growing while other military branches are being reduced because modern warfare is about intel and technology, stats and analytics, so it is with modern policing. This is not just my opinion. I am proud to have been elected president this year for the Texas Police Chiefs Association and to have been a featured speaker at an international conference on problem-oriented policing, selected to the Governor's Advisory Board for the Homeland Security, and any number of other examples where the progress we have made here has been recognized and emulated around the state, nation, and world. However, as counterproductive as I believe to return to drive around policing would be, that is not the largest immediate threat that this time for change, for change's sake, mentality presents. And here is something you really should consider before you vote. The great risk to your receiving the response and level of service from our department that you expect is not from a lack of officers in any particular division. The risk right now is from a lack of revenue. Our department is a $17 million per year operation. 1.5 million of that is operations. The rest is payroll. Something as simple as a 50 cent change in gas prices can swing our budget by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sales tax revenues are drastically down in San Angelo for 2016. The state comptroller's office says that we're off almost 15% for the year already. To maintain your safety and services with an increased population, a low officer-citizen ratio, and while reorganizing or cutting our budget, we rely on having a leadership team with experience and acumen. Our team has been here doing the job for years. We have navigated through financial downturns before. 
we are ready to meet this financial challenge. Many of you know my father is retired SAPD. I went to work for the department and dispatch at 19 years old. I would have gone to work for the department at 18, but I didn't get the janitorial job I applied for then. In 2004, I became the second youngest chief ever elected. So now after 12 years as your chief, I'm the candidate in this election with the most years of service to SAPD, yet I'm the youngest candidate running for my job. My first campaign was called Partnering with the Public, and I outlined a new, modernized department utilizing new concepts and creating a bridge of communication to improve relations with the citizens and the officers, and it has worked. However, I have stated a goal of reaching 50% reduction in crime during my tenure. If re-elected, I will turn 50 in office towards the end of my next term, and I think we can make that 50% reduction before then. So I am asking for your vote and your continued partnership so that we can go on to 50. Thank you.